evening everyone. I'm happy to be the last speaker. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm from India, but presently I'm here at USDA as a visiting scientist for six months. So my topic is a little different from what I have been listening since morning. Uh, we I have a little a small experiment on this uh, antibacterial activity of magnesium oxide nanoparticles on the foodborne pathogens. Like uh, yeah. Say like football, outbreak of football pathogens, uh, it's uh, increased the attention for the public towards the food safety. And as for the CDC, uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, they estimate around 48 million cases of football diseases occur in the US, uh, with 100,000 hospitalization and around 3,000 deaths. So commonly recognized football pathogens are uh, Salmonella, Campylobacter, E. coli. So our purpose is to gather more sufficient information to develop effective antimicrobial strategies to ensure food safety and extend the life of the food products. As far as uh, metal oxide nanoparticles are concerned, so recently this attraction towards the use of inorganic antimicrobial agents uh, increased as a, because of improved safety and the stability in the processing during the processing. And uh, these nanostructure materials it enhance the antimicrobial effectiveness because of its structure and its surface area and is often used in textiles and food industry to limit the growth of bacteria. Then uh, toxicity of nanoparticles usually on microorganisms is by physical disruption or <coughs> oxidative stress. Metal oxides like uh, this uh, titanium oxide, zinc oxide, magnesium oxide, uh, calcium oxide, uh, these things are recognized as a particular agent. Um, the zinc oxide, magnesium oxide are also not uh, considered as essential mineral for human health. Few studies have been conducted on zinc oxide and magnesium oxide nanoparticles against the foodborne pathogens, but our concern is that we are more looking on the campylobacters. Campylobacters, their growth condition is much more uh, different from other foodborne pathogens. They require the microaerobic condition and they are very much sensitive to the oxidative stress. You know. As far as magnesium oxide is concerned, as for the USDA, uh, US, uh, FDA, they consider as a grass. It's a generally recognized as safe to use and it can be used with no limitation and used in food processing and they can be used as supplemented in even in infant food. In this study, we try to evaluate the integral effects of maximum oxide nanoparticles against the measured foodborne uh, pathogens and to investigate their mechanism of excess. For this experiment, we are using four uh, bacterial strains, two campylobacter. They grow under a different condition. They require 42 degrees centigrade and a microaerobic workstation. And Ascherisia coli uh, is 015787. It's a very uh, virulent strain. It's used as uh, an enterohemorrhagic strain. And even in the children, it causes the hemorrhagic uremic syndrome. And Salmonella enterica. These two, uh, their growth condition is similar. They grow at 37 degrees centigrade under aerobic condition. And then we use, uh, this is a commercially available magnesium oxide nanoparticle, average size of 20 nanometer. Then one dye is a redox potential dye, because it's used as an uh, indicator to use the dead cell and the uh, kill cell. It's a work, microaerobic workstation which we use for growing of the pyrobacter. Under this condition, we set at 42 degrees centigrade. 5% oxygen, 10% carbon dioxide, 85% nitrogen, and 82% reactive humidity. Uh, this is the dye we have used. It's in the uh, oxidized state. It's in blue color. When it is uh, reduced, and it turns to a very fluorescent red color. So this is used as an indicator for the uh, inhibition of growth. So for Investigating the minimum inhibitory concentration of magnesium oxide nanoparticles against the Campylobacter jejuni and coli, uh, we use a 96 well plate, micro titer plate, and with different concentration of uh, magnesium oxide at a cell concentration of 4. These nanoparticles we use, uh, we start from 8 
then it's a serial dilution, a double fold dilution. And in case of campylobacters, it's showing up to 0.5 milligram of magnesium oxide nanoparticles. It's inhibiting the growth of uh, these two organisms. So which is showing the dye is showing blue color means there is no growth of bacteria. And uh, pink color is showing it, it's the dye is reduced because bacteria bacterial growth is there. So last three wells are kept as a control. C1 and C2 is positive control and the C3 is the negative control. This is for the Campylobacter and as uh, for the Escherichia coli procedure is the same. In this condition, one milligram per ml concentration is inhibiting the growth of the Escherichia coli of 10 to 4, 4 coloniformin unit per ml. In case of Salmonella enteritis, it seems to be little resistant. It's uh, showing only up to 2 mg uh, per ml concentration of the use of oxide and particles. Could reduce the growth of the cell growth. And after having the results of this minimal inhibitor concentration, we have set its antibacterial activity of this nanoparticles by conducting uh, by treatment with different concentration of uh, nanoparticles, then we have taken log 8 to 10 concentration of cells of these four pathogens and treated with this uh, starting from 0.5, 1, 2, 4, and 8 milligrams per ml. Then after treatment, we kept it for incubation for 10 hours and every at zero hour we have collected the samples. Then after 30 minutes, 1 hour, and every 2 hour, up to 10 hours of incubation we have to take. So whatever sample we have collected is diluted in, into 1 is to 10 dilution in a 96 well plate. Then it is 7 microliter of all the dilutions we drop into 6 times. This, is, uh, this method is known as the 6 by 6 drop method. And after 24 hours of incubation, we have calculated the colonies, whatever we get in a suitable dilution, we have counted. Then that one is back calculated again the cell concentration. So that shows the inhibition, uh, actual antibacterial activi activity and uh, uh, whether the cells are culturable or thin. So this is the results for Campylobacter jejuni. Uh, so zero milligram treatment, there is no change uh, because since there is no nanoparticle. <coughs> In case of 0.5 milligram, uh, after 8 hours of incubation, it's having a little reduction in the cell concentration. And then 1 milligram, it has a significant uh, reduction in cell concentration. It's up to 3 logs. And 2, 4, 8 milligram, it could completely kill those 8 to, uh, eight to 9 CFU per ml of cell concentration within uh, 2 to 4 hours. This is the scanning electron microscopy. These cells are, uh, these samples are from the same condition after the 10 hours of incubation. Uh, this is the untreated cells of Campylobacter jejuni. It's an spiral cell, and, uh, uh, and this site is the. Yeah, this is the uh, one milligram treatment after 10 hours of incubation. Here in Campylobacter, uh, these cells morphology is totally changed, and even the membranes are damaged. Uh, it become rounded and there is some light color as there is some you know, membrane damage. And these cells were not cultured, it doesn't grow in the medium. What is the manual The MGO particles, where are they? No, no, this is the cells we have collected. So yeah. A centrifuge yeah. and we collect the cells. You don't show what? Okay. Yeah. Sometimes it comes to be worse than we use the cells. Uh, this is for another strain of Campylobacter, uh, coli, and so almost all the similar. This uh, for 0 milligram, there is no change, even 0.5 change. 1 milligram is having, uh, there is not quite a significant reduction. 2 milligram, 4, 8 milligram, it could completely kill the cells. This is also that um, after uh, 1 milligram treatment, after 10 hours, Campylobacter coli. Is it still live in section that magnesium uh, uh, oxide labeled another particle? Because there are bright sides in their picture. Are they magnesium oxide? So this is more thing. Small yeah. Yeah, this yeah, this yeah. 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 
in, in some pictures are there actually jumping. I am sorry, I will come to this one. Maybe some correction. In case of the E. coli, as Kirishya coli, say uh, 0 mg and 0.5 mg treatment, there is no change, no reduction in cell concentration. 1 mg, it has a significant reduction. Then 2, uh, 4, and 8, uh, it could completely kill the all the cells, the cells. This is SEM. In this case, uh, this is unfitted cells, but uh, like not like in capillovector, capillovector has become rounded now. Here, in case of this uh, bacteria, uh, this is totally collapsed. It seems to be like all the internal contents are in the cell. These cells are not. Uh, Can you use yeah. any biomarker to target specific? Uh, strain of molecular uh, microorganism, if they are mixed, if you have contamination or if there is a disease, are they selective towards a certain uh, microorganism like biosensor so that they'll, it will kill those nanoparticles, they'll kill certain bacteria and the ones that are necessary? Do you have a selection? It, these are actually all the very pathogenic foodborne pathogens. These are very virulent, virulent strains. Uh, Once we have identified, uh, we have selected based on its virulence, which is oh, very really common. Just, yeah. uh, this biosensing with these cells, uh -huh. so that we can detect and localize any contaminants, even though they are very, very dilute from a patient or from any environment. That's why I'm asking, because uh, obviously you would like to use this as a tool so can we use it? To, what is the purpose of it's just like dilute or it's just is it uh, pure culture that you're yeah. trying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because like our intention is that we want to see the effect of this magnesium oxide nanoparticle can be used or it has any effect, antibacterial effect on this very potent football pathogens. That was our intention. This is the E. coli, uh, then salmon enterica, enterica is, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, like 0 mg, 0.5, 1 mg, uh, we don't have any reduction in cell concentration. Um, 2, 4, 2 has a reduction in cell concentration and 4 and 8, it could kill the cells, all the cells. It's almost so similar with the E. coli. Uh, Totally collapsed the same, so these are the old nanoparticles. So, in conclusion, like we can conclude this, this nanoparticle magnesium oxide, it has a strong activity, activated activity <coughs> against these ozone pathogens, and uh, the, as the higher concentration, concentration goes higher, it has a greater bacterial inactivation, it appears to be interact with the microbial cells induce considerable changes in cell morphology and disrupting normal cell structure and function resulting in cell thought inhibition of death. So we can say it's a potential, there is potential to use as an antibacterial agent in good processing and packaging, but there is long way to go to see if, uh, how to use, how safe to use this thing. And uh, in regards to this antibacterial mechanism of action, uh, we need to study some more like to see the, this assessment of cell membrane integrating, we can go this ETDM on our side, we have already started, which can penetrate the uh, damaged mem membrane and block the amplification. This is one technique we can go for, see its cell integrating. Another is that uh, we can see for its oxidative stress genes, whether the magnesium oxide is, can induce oxidative stress in this organism. So, uh, that's what I have. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you to my research group from USDA and funding agency from the Department of Biotechnology. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. This time is here. I was just wondering if, yes. the, if there are uh, photocatalytic effects in this study. Uh, usually, for example, if you use uh, UV or ultraviolet, uh, and the magnesium oxide, I forgot the long gap of magnesium oxide. Different. What is that? It's too large. I think it's too, it's large. too large to get any photocatalytic effect. Okay. 
So there's no sort of definite you could get now, or there's no, nothing like that. Uh -huh. So it's surprising. Yes. But do you have an area what is the mechanism of the bacteria killing? Uh, that's what, uh, as for up to this study, so we found like it's a direct um, cell membrane leakage, uh, that's what. But to know if uh, it induces any oxidative stress or not, that uh, still yet to be said. Oxidative stress? Oh uh, no, that is not confirmed. But, uh, what, what? It's, uh, yeah. but I'm just speculating that you increase the pH simply. If you put magnesium oxide into it, yes, in the now. pH yeah. or metal effect. The surface uh, with that is ba uh, basic or acid? Yeah, it should be basic. It should be basic, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, yeah. just to say, the sense of bacteria, it may change, but yes, the effect can be on um, metal effect just because of the material that you use simply, the same thing that you cover the money. I uh, magnesium oxide is very stable, usually, so it's not that easy. The, the point of um, the, 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 the Teha is kind of a nice point, like here. Yeah. It's a killing effect. Uh, okay. Did you check the, the, the effect of sun in particles or something like that? Regarding? <coughs> uh, uh, like a uh, small size better than large size? Or uh, no, we have used only 20. Only 20. 20. Yeah. Do they have something special? Yes, yeah, like uh, below this one hundred, it's increased activity. That's clear. But okay. in my experiment, I have used only twenty uh, seconds. Okay. okay. Is there any comments more? It's just the bacteria may have used this again to magnesium metal effect, or it's just used as a food. I'm an industrial microbiologist by training. That's my first training. Uh huh. Um, so I know the microbes, I have used the microorganisms as a tool to generate products as well as I use the microorganisms to carry genetic material for diagnostics or therapies. So magnesium and oxide can be used and recognized as a food or any kind of metallic effect can also kill the bacteria or any given microorganism. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons we treat money or some other thing with different sort of chemicals to pro protect Human kind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But can they, my only one comment uh, oh. that can create an effect to human microbiome if it's used against human. That's only uh, that's what I said. Said. It's a long way to go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this is the only first step we have seen, like uh, whether it has very it can be it has any effect on bacteria or how much concentration can be reduced by using this most concentrated mm -hmm. so long way to go to if you want to use the yeah. okay. 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 Yeah. all the sectors it's required to be studied. Yeah. It seems that you use very large concentration. That was surprising. No, no, because yeah, the that's what yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in when you large. see this uh, zinc oxide it's much more sensitive than the uh, oh. zinc oxide. Zinc oxide even 0.2 uh, uh, it works. Because that's what we have seen in the MIC. MIC is only up to 0.5 it's showing the reduction. <coughs> so be beyond that there is no... So it depends on the matter. Okay. It depends on the matter. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Good. Uh, well, let's thank the speaker again and close the session. Thank you for coming.